Well, back then it wasn't really seen as a career. Uh, football was seen as a, um, a, a goal, you know, a dream. Um, kids of my age grew up um, being very passionate about football. You know, the footy card swapping at lunchtime in primary school was a big deal. But I grew up, I was a kid who took a footy to bed. And all through my adolescent years, I'd, I would just throw it to myself in bed and learn to catch it without making a sound on my hands and soft hands with one hand and two hands. And yeah, it was a big deal to me to hopefully play football one day. What about that for a mark? So my, my route to the Bombers or journey there was, you know, from the age of understanding football clubs, I was a big Hawthorne fan as a kid because that's what my dad barrack for. So barrack, uh, playing for the Bombers was, I had to get my head around because Essendon had the Ringwood zone. So the only, my only pathway to VFL football was going to be through the Bombers. I was comfortable with that and I set all my goals around doing that. He'll pay the mark, even though Cobbing tried to break clear. He makes Justin Madden look like a dwarf. Essendon embraced me really quickly. Um, it was a club easy to fit into. Uh, it was a very hungry club in the early 80s. Um, under Sheeds, it was a pretty brutal environment. Training was very hard. He trained players for mental toughness. Um, so the fitness work was extreme. Um, I trained really hard over the 83, 84 summer. I knew I needed to get stronger. Sheeds um, uh, it made me stay in the gym before I go out to train because he wanted me to build a body. So I started to build some strength and confidence in my body. Um, I'd go out to the track an hour after being in the gym and I couldn't lift my arms to take marks because of the, the weight training I was doing. Um, if you pass the test, you know, he'd give you a shot. I remember uh, round one, St Kilda at Moorabbin, Tony Lockett's at the other end and we're both 18 and, and we both kicked seven that day in round one. But I took a one-hand mark in the goal square like early in the game and that was the penny dropping. That, that moment there was going, hang on, I just held him out there and did that. I can do this. And um, it was just that my first moment where I felt like I um, had a really a role to play out there and becoming an established player. And that was, that was the exciting part. Away Would the salmon run come goal, to an end? It didn't look that way in the 13th round goal. against Collingwood. He took his tally to 63 before tragedy struck. Uh, the day I hurt, uh, hurt my knee was uh, Victoria Park, uh, Collingwood, and I remember um, I had I kicked three goals, but we were we were behind late in the second quarter or midway through the second quarter. So I charged back to the centre bounce. We kicked the goal. And the ball, uh, the umpire bounced the ball and uh, it went back over Cloakey's head ever so slightly. So being that cocky, yeah, the world's my oyster, I was bulletproof. I hadn't been injured up in that, st to that stage of my life, so I didn't know what that was. Um, I charged over him and I grabbed the ball out of the ruck and I took a few steps. I, there were voices around me, you know, Alan Ezard, Leon Baker. I probably could have given it off, but everything happened so quickly. And I, I tried to get a quick kick away forward and um, uh, Jeff Raines came from inside and my leg snapped around him. I just remember lying on the ground in a bit of pain and um, looking up, wondering. I knew I, my whole leg was just jelly and my knee, so. Very bad luck for Essendon. And then I remember getting the news that I was going to, I had the Rico and I, I was going to miss at least 12 months. And they prepared me to, they prepared me for not playing again. Because knee reconstructions back then, um, there wasn't too many great role models. <laughs> no one really come back from them, so it's a pretty scary time. Into this quarter by just on 35 minutes, there's the siren. Essendon winning their first flag since 1965. And the so, yeah, I sat in the stands that day and watched him, uh, you know, tough it out for half. Four or five goals down at three-quarter time, I think we were, 27 points. And then um, I'll never forget going down to the race, the guys are doing the victory lap. And um, Terry Danaher called me out on the ground and gave me the cup, which is, you know, one of the reasons Terry, one of many reasons Terry Danaher was a great captain. You let me share the moment a little bit there, and oh, I never forgot that. That was good fun. I'd marked in the calendar when the fixture came out, I'd marked the date I was going to come back on, and I just gave myself those goals. And yeah, fortunately for me, everything worked in, uh, it came into it worked into plan. I played a reserves game at Waverley, and that went really well for me. And then um, uh, there was an injury next week, and Sheeds put me in the side. Uh, he's always been, he was always very supportive of, of my, you know, getting back. So yeah, it was a tough 12 months, so hard. You know, the, the training, the, the repetitive nature of it. But getting back to maybe be a part of an 85 success story was all that drove me.